Thanks for joining us on VIP TV today. Former British and Commonwealth champion and world title challenger Callum Johnson. He's back this weekend against Emil Market for the WBO Global Light Heavyweight title after two years out. And it's been a long time, Callum, but how strange is it having to sit in your hotel room till you're told you can leave because of the COVID regulations? It's, uh, yeah, it's a strange one, but do you know what? It's... It's easy for me because I can just switch off and chill. It's it's something that I'm used to as well. When I've been up in Manchester in hotel rooms and things like that, I've been sat in my hotel. You know, I'll go do my training session in the morning, then I'm in the hotel all day, and I might go for a run at the night. But something I'm used to, and it, it doesn't really bother me. I just switch off. I mean, for this fight, I mean, it was quite mad. You say you can live that life, but you've had ten weeks of it in Bolton, living in a hotel popping home a cake at weekends, but you've still got five nights a week, say, in a hotel in Bolton. How boring is that after training? Because you can't train um, 10 hours a day. As you say, you can have a couple hours and do a run for an hour. Yeah, it's, you know, again, it's it's something that I've uh, uh, become accustomed to. And, you know, I just, like you said, with social media these days as well, you're never on your own, are you? You're always on your phone. You can FaceTime home, FaceTime the kids and, you know, look through social media. So you, there's always something to do. Yeah. Um, on to the boxing. How exciting is it to be back after a, a couple of years? Yeah, it's good. It's good. I was just on the phone then to a friend of mine and I was saying to him how excited I am. I, I don't think I've ever felt this happy and excited about being, you know, in a fight week and, you know, ready to, ready just to do the press conference, the weigh-in. And sometimes... You know, the press conferences, you can think, oh, I can't be bothered to do this today or anything like that. But I'm just looking forward to it all because it's been so long and there has been doubts if it was ever going to come again. And, you know, now I'm here and I'm, I'm just enjoying it. Yeah. Did you ever doubt whether it would come again? I know you've had two years out. Was there ever a time, you know, obviously you had the loss to Baturbiev where, you know, you lost, you, didn't, you lost the fight, but, you know, you didn't lose anything in your career as such because of the performance. Then a great win against Shawnee Monaghan, who was a, a decent, well, a decent fringe contender. Suddenly, two years out, did you think, "Hold on, this might be it. I might have to go and do something else in my life." Yeah, I think um, you know, I, I, I never, I never let it go. I, I always thought I would get back in there, even through all like last year and everything else. But I have to be honest, there was moments when you know I did that. Will, will he have a fight again? What, what's happening? Why is why is this happening? Why has my career gone this way? You know, after getting that good win and then, um, but, you know, I always believed I would get back and I always believed that, you know, something would come for me and that's why I stayed, though, know, switched on and I stayed in the gym and I stayed motivated and I stayed disciplined because, you know, I, I always deep down believed I would get my moment again. Yeah, I mean, and uh, you're coming back, you're back with Frank Warren now, Um and he's got quite a few light heavyweights, you know, and there's talk of you and Joe Smith. Before we talk about Joe Smith, how would you fancy yourself against Yard and Lyndon Arthur? Because they're great domestic fights, you know, and there's money for all of you. Yeah, I mean, listen, there's some great domestic fighters, you know, Lyndon Arthur, um, Anthony Yard, you've got Craig Richards, you've got Joshua Boatze. It's it, The list, I mean, the top 10 are all top good fights, you know, all the way down the top 10, even... Even past the top 10, there's a few decent fighters. Um, but, you know, I fancy myself to beat anybody. And I fancy myself on, on, on the day to beat anybody in the world. You know what I mean? Not, not just in Britain. So, you know, I'll, I'll always back myself, no matter what. Now, I mentioned um, Yard, and, uh, Yard and Arthur particularly because they're, they're in the Queensbury stable. So they're, they're matches there can be made without too much argument. And I know you're not going to say no. So if there's any, as long as the money's right, you're not going to say no. The no would come from the other side, I guess. Yeah, well, like I say, I, I don't, I don't really, if it's a fair deal and it's a proper offer, I don't know the word no. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, you know, if, if that fight, if them fights get put to me um, and it's, it makes sense and it's right and the money's right, you know, I'm, I'm more, I'm more good to go. And you're confident of beating Yard and Arthur? 100%, 100%. That, that's no disrespect to them. That's just believing in myself. Yeah. And also, Joe Smith's someone you've been linked with. And that, realistically, I guess that's the world title fight. If you could, you know, they're all, they're all good champions. You've been in with Baturbiev and pushed him. But, you know, of them all, Joe Smith would be the one, maybe, you would think, this is my moment for sure. Yeah, defo. Um, 
Joe Smith's a great fighter, he's an exciting fighter, he can punch. Yeah. Um, but he you've got to be realistic. He is probably the less well, he is the lesser of the champions. Bevel's beat him and Bert would be the best in the division. So um Joe Smith is a lesser of the champions, so he would be the best bet. Um, and like you say, it's a fight I would love to have. Before he became world champion, it was spoke about, you know, a year, 18 months ago. And it was a fight I was all up for then. And um, I'm just as up for it now. And uh, what do you make of Emil Markic, who you faced this weekend, the Bosnian? I think he's won the WBO European title a couple of times. He can punch for sure. Um, it's a decent fight to come back to after two years out. I mean, you could argue, yeah. he, you know, he's on par with Sean Monaghan, similar record. Yeah, he's, um, you know, it was one of them. When I came back, it was like, do you want a six, eight round fight, you know, get back in and, and get the rust off, as people say. And and I thought, do you know what? I don't. I don't. I want I want an half proper fight, you know. I want I want to get back in and and, and see against a, a, a credible opponent. You know, I don't want to just go in there with somebody that's just going to roll over that doesn't really want to win or, you know, hasn't got a credible record that, you know, that are used to losing. You know, this this kid I'm fine, he's not used to losing. He don't he obviously doesn't like losing. He comes to win and it's a fight that I've got to I've got to be switched on for. Let let's be honest. I've got to be switched on for. I've got to try and perform to the best I can and I've got to look good doing it. And you know, and I feel as though having someone in front of me like him who who, who can punch, has got plenty of knockouts, will keep me switched on and, and will bring out the best of me. If I can ask you, I'm asking you as a fan about Baturbia, what's it like being in with him? You know, what sort of power does does he carry? I mean, you 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 um, him, and you know, uh, you you gave him as good a test as anyone has. You know, with the fact that yeah. you got him. Um, it's a strange one because obviously he can punch very hard. I mean, his record says that. I mean, when he got me, he got me. Um, but at the same time, whilst I was in there. I didn't really think, I wasn't thinking, oh, wow. You know what I mean? This is like something I've not felt. I mean, I was just I was just focused on trying to get in myself. So I wasn't really thinking about, maybe I should have thought a little bit more about what was coming back at me. You know what I mean? But I don't know, I felt as though, I don't know, I felt like I was pushing him around the ring and he was, last that last round, I felt like every time I got close to him, he was having to grab me and well, then he got me. Um you know, he's a, he's a, he is what he is. He's a beast. He's a beast of a man. What can I say? Um, it, I just think to myself, you know, I can't help but think, oh, ah, I very nearly got him and could he, yeah. could he have got him if I'd have just gone that little bit more? But, you know, maybe not. Maybe not. Who knows? Hey, you win a world title, you might get him again for all, for all the belt. It, it would, uh, that'd be the dream, wouldn't it? That'd be the dream. Hey, what you say, you you know, you're, um, you're, um, you know, you're, you know, this is the best you've had an excitement in fight week. How have you kept the enthusiasm? Not just, you know, because you've been boxing a long time, not just 10 years as a pro. You know, it was 2008, was it? Your Commonwealth game success, was it? Uh, two, 2010, 2010. 2010 in, in Delhi, wasn't it? Yeah, Delhi, yeah. yeah. I mean, how, um, how have you kept the enthusiasm that long? Because you've had periods of inactivity, you've been injured. Other times it's not been your fault at all. Yeah, I think I think the reason that keeps me so motivated and, and disciplined is because I've not achieved anywhere near that, you know, I feel as though I, I could have done or should have done and, and capable of. And, and not only that, you know, losing my dad when I lost my dad yeah. and, and knowing that what we set out to do, I feel as though I owe it to him to just go wherever I've got to go to to try and get out whatever I can get out of it. Um, you know, so when it is all over, I can sit down on my dad's bench at his, at his uh, grave and say, you know what, dad, we we did the best we could and, and you know, I never gave up and I never let it go and, you know, I got I got out what we wanted to get out of it. You know, that that's what drives me more than anything. Um, obviously, as I've got my kids, you know, that I, I want to provide for them a better life and, and win belts for them. And so their dad can, I mean, they, they can say, oh, their dad's a champion and things like that. But, you know, my main, my main driving force and, and my main reason why is the, the honour of my dad, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, you've got the honour and I've seen you said that and obviously, you know, you, I can imagine when you was a kid, he's taking you to shows everywhere or to the gym every night. I can only imagine. But 
also at this stage of your career, look, you're fresh, you're 35, you're fresh. You know, there can't be many fresher guys in their mid-30s in boxing. But is it also important these next two, three years, however you plan hanging around, as well as winning titles, securing yourself financially? Because yeah, that's you're, that's you're not that's like a twenty-five year old who can think, well, I'll have three, four years doing this. You've got to have money fights now, you've got to come out with exactly. it. I think I'm sure that's exactly. what the table would want. Exactly, that's it. You know, I can have all the belts in the world and I can have all the pats on the back and I can have this and that, but don't put food on the table at the end of the day. Um and like you say, the next the next two, three years or however long I've got, you know, where it might be four years, who knows? Uh but yeah, it's about about getting the biggest fights possible, the most money possible. And, and you know, obviously the, the main aim is a world title, but with that, obviously, come, comes the money as well. So Yeah. And how's life with Joe? We haven't spoke to Joe for a few weeks. How's Joey, uh, Joe Gallagher? He's good. He's buzzing. He uh, was in the gym Monday and it was, I, I thought it was his birthday. He was that happy. It was, yeah, well, it was, he was dancing around the gym. He was singing, he was dancing. Joe, Joe seems in a good place. He seems, uh, Joe seems driven and happy and uh, very motivated himself at the minute. Well, he's got yourself this week, who, you know, who's in a very good fight, but who's, um, you know, who's a favourite to win, but you're still in a, you know, a fight you've got to perform well to win. Um, and next week, I suppose, he's got Marcus Morrison, who's been written off by everybody, you know, all of us. We've got to put our hands up, we've written him off. Yeah. And of course, Tasha Jonas, who's in, who's in a great fight. Yeah, it's like you say, Marcus, we, you know, he's up against it. You know, everyone's writing him off. But, you know, one thing about Marcus, he can punch, you know. He really, really can. can punch. He really can punch. And not only that, with some of the work we see him do in the gym and you just think, I don't know, there's something that makes you think he might he might just pull it. But, again, you know, he's up against it. Well, everyone knows that. Uh, and Tasha as well, you know, she's 37, I think she's this year. She's 36, but she's better than she's ever been. She's yeah. fitter, stronger than she's ever been. You know, I mean, you got to look at her last fight and she she won that fight. I mean, she should be a world champion. Um, and yeah, again, she she's up against it against Katie. Uh, arguably, people call her the pound for pound best, you know. But again, if anyone can pull it off, you know, Tash can. She's got serious skills. You know, she's got, um, she's got the experience now as well. She's got the strength now. And, you know, it's, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. What's your plans after the fight? Because as you say, you've been virtually away for 10 weeks, you know, popping home for a couple of days at the weekend, some weeks. So, you know, what's the plans after? You can't get away with just, it at the minute, can you? Uh, no, just go home and just enjoy a little bit of time at home with my boys. You know, I'll, I'll be back in the gym Monday. I'll be I'll, obviously really? not in Manchester, not in Manchester, but I'll be in the gym Monday. I'll be training. Um, I changed my training around a little bit. Um, but just enjoy being at home, enjoy going home after training, you know, because as much as you're not actually, you, you can't go out every day and do things every day because the boys are at school and, and everything else. That's not real life, is it? But, no. you know, just going home after training and being able to eat eat tea or, or dinner, whatever you want to call it, with my kids and, you know, chill out watching a bit of telly with my kids and my missus and just, just general family life. I'm just looking forward to having a bit of family life. I tell you, you've definitely been in Bolton for too long in the last 10 weeks because you're calling dinner like I do. And I live in Manchester. I have to call it dinner. They call it tea up here. I've never got used to yeah. it. No, I, I, to be honest with you, I've always called it tea, though. Oh, no, I've I always called, Yeah, I've always called it breakfast, dinner and tea. That's oh, the thing. Breakfast, lunch and yeah. dinner, me. I mean, there you go. Yeah, yeah breakfast, dinner and, and tea and supper. It's just being a posh yeah. southern and a lunch. Yeah, 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 yeah. I said, well, yeah, thank so, you. Uh, Sorry, thanks. For, well, thanks for talking to us tonight. It's lovely catching up with you, and lovely to lovely. see you with a smile on your face. Nice one, Steve. Appreciate it. Thank Good you. Luck. And all the best to Joe when he gets up in the bubble. I'm not sure when he's there from. I guess he's there. I, th um, I think he's. I think he's here, mate. He's here. He's in his room himself. So we uh, we're all we're all in prison, aren't we, for 24 hours? So uh, Jim, well, Joe, will have you out tomorrow. He'll be talking, talking 24-7, so yeah, it'll all be I'm good. Sure he'll, make, he'll make up for it tomorrow, won't he? Yeah, that's why you like the peace and quiet now, because Joe will be chatting. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks very much indeed. For all boxing, info, news and latest interviews, Amateur and Pro, across and off, click and subscribe. VIP, boxing promotions. Also, Twitter, Instagram and Facebook.